Good morning. I'm Miss Mary. I hope everyone is having a great day. It's cold out there, but the sun is shining, and things are always better when the sun is shining. Today we're going to talk about an unusual holiday. Can you guess what that is? If you said Groundhog Day, you're right. Groundhog Day is February 2nd. That's why I'm wearing this top hat and this bow tie. Some people dress like that to celebrate. Are you ready to pretend with me? Well, let's pretend that my little friend here is a groundhog. This is Phil, and we need to wake him up. Phil, wake up, Phil. Wake up, little buddy. <sighs> Phil is really sleepy. Come on. Come on, Phil. Okay. I'm still tired. We need you, Phil. All right. All right. Hmm. Why would you need a groundhog for a holiday? Well, today we'll find out. There actually is a place in Pennsylvania called Puxatawney, and it's a town in the western part of the state. I was there one time, but unfortunately I was not there in February, so I didn't get to see the real Puxatawney Phil groundhog. But anyways, we're going to find out about Groundhog Day today. This book is called Groundhog Day. It's by Lisa M. Harrington and it's published by Children's Press. And this is an imprint of Scholastic Incorporated. This is called A Groundhog's Tale. Here is how the Groundhog Day story goes. After hibernating, hibernating means sleeping, for the winter, a groundhog comes out of its burrow. A burrow is like a tunnel or a hole underground. If it is cloudy, the groundhog will not see its shadow. It will stay outside. That means there will be an early spring. It says these groundhogs are snuggled up in their winter burrow. That's what real groundhogs look like. If the sun is shining, the groundhog will see its shadow. It will go back inside its burrow. People say that means there will be six more weeks of winter weather. Here's a fast fact. The groundhog is one of many animals that hibernate in the winter. Course. A groundhog cannot really tell us when spring will begin. The holiday is just pretend. By February, some people are tired of cold weather. They are ready for spring. Another story that we have at the library is called Go to Sleep Groundhog and it's by Judy Cox. Do you ever have nights when you can't sleep? If I do, I get up and read. In this book, Groundhog has a big problem. He can't sleep. So he gets up and he goes exploring. He meets a Halloween witch, Thanksgiving turkeys, and even Santa. They all try to get him to go back to bed. But with no sleep, how can he get up for Groundhog Day? You might want to check this book out and also we have the movie that goes along with it. Go to Sleep Groundhog by Judy Cox. You have probably heard of the story The Night Before Christmas. Well this is the called The Night Before Groundhog Day and it's by Natasha Wynn. This book is told in rhyme and it talks about predictions, traditions, and it has a lot of groundhog fun. Another book we have is Double Trouble Groundhog Day. It's by Bethany Roberts. 
In this story, Grampy Groundhog decides he's going to turn over his weather forecasting job to one of his grandchildren. But wait, there's a problem because there are twins here and Gregory and Greta both want the job. There's competition and also teamwork. Read the book to find out what happens. Do you like foxes? If you like foxes, this is the book for you. It's called Brownie Groundhog and the February Fox by Susan Blackaby. It's illustrated by Sarman, Carmen Segoiva and it's published by Sterling. When she stood up, her shadow stretched across the frosted field. I was afraid of that, said Brownie. Shadows mean more winter and more winter means waiting. Wait, wait, wait. Brownie stomped her foot. Fooey. A small, scrawny fox heard Brownie grousing. That means Brownie was complaining. His ears twitched. He licked his chops and crouched to pounce. Can Brownie outfox the fox? Check this book out to find out. Groundhog Weather School by Joan Hollow is illustrated by Kristen Sora and it's published by Penguin Group. It's G.P. Putman Sons, a division of Penguin Young Readers Group. It's filled with fun facts and humor and I'm going to share a page out of this. There's a Professor Groundhog and he wants to know if you have what it takes to be a weather forecaster. Says, have you got what it takes to be a weather forecaster? Take this quiz and check all that apply. Are you a mammal? If you are warm-blooded, have a backbone, and drank milk as a baby, you probably are. Are you furry? You be the judge. Do you live in a burrow? If you live in a hole or a tunnel dug in the ground, check this box. Are you a rodent? If you have two front teeth that never stop growing, you probably are. Did you know that? I really didn't know that until I read this book. Are you an herbivore? If you only eat plants, you are. Do you hibernate? If you sleep for months at a time each winter, you're a hibernator, all right. If you checked all six boxes, you're invited to attend Groundhog Weather School. This one's called The Groundhog Day Book of Facts and Fun, and it's by Wendy Old. It's illustrated by Paige, Bill, and Fry, and it's published by Albert Whitman and Company. If you read this, you'll find out if groundhogs really wake up in February. Do you like riddles? This book has some Groundhog Day riddles. Are you ready? What do you call a groundhog's laundry? Hogwash! How do groundhogs smell? With their noses. What's a groundhog's favorite food? Burrow Eatos. Check this out for more groundhog riddles. We also have a lot of nonfiction groundhog day books. This is one of my favorite. It's called The Library of Holidays Groundhog Day. And it's by Amy Margaret. And the publisher is the Rosen Publishing Group, Power Kids Press. And from this book, I am going to show you a picture of Puxatawney Phil. And there is the gentleman with Puxatawney Phil celebrating Groundhog Day. Would you like to make your own groundhog? If you have a paper cup or a plastic cup or even a styrofoam cup at your house, you can do that. Have someone help you poke a hole in the bottom of the cup and you would need a straw. I used little pieces of tissue paper and glued that on the cup, but you don't have to do that. You could color it maybe, 
or if you had construction paper, you could put construction paper around for the burl. And then make yourself a little groundhog. And on Groundhog's Day, you can pop the groundhog up out of his burl and you can decide whether he saw his shadow or not. Have a great Groundhog's Day, everyone, and come on in and check out the books that we have at our library. Bye, Phil. Bye, everybody.